Yesterday, mm. the president was in Molo. You know Molo? No, Molo. Yes. Mm. In Molo, what happened? He uh, addressed the people of Molo. And he told them, you know what, yes, it's good to be here. He attended a church service at the Molo Catholic Church. Um, it's good to be here. And of course, just before the president speaks, Mengi and Asemwa now, Wangine. Mengi Amesemo. And he said, yeah, yeah, Mengi Amesemo. And it's about the livelihoods of the people of this particular town called Molo. And another one down here called El Bagon. And the things that have happened here over the last eight years. You see, this town was at some point being driven by the timber industry. Timber industry because we had people who would go into the forests, they harvest timber, they come here, they come and process the timber, whatever it's done. There are sawmills in the Yes. Place. So all the way from sawmilling to treatment to and it was vibrant. It was. It was a vibrant industry here. And uh, then those people who were dealing with the offcuts. That's yeah. also another secondary market mm. and a vibrant industry on that as well. So people were working in the sawmills, people were working in the trade, people were working in the forest itself. And after the ban on logging was imposed, this town, all those industries just became nothing. Moribund. Moribund. Though even people who were trading in the sawdust, yes. another l huge industry by itself. Mm. And they said, you know what, eh? Just to quote him and not using his exact words, but what he was saying. He said, there was a minister then who alikuwa mjinga yosiku. Akaenda kafunga mambo yote ya mambo ya msitu. Sasa watu hapa wamekosa kazi wanaumia. Miti huko kwa forest inaoza. Na zimekoma. Unona hii ujinga hiko ikenya? And that's why he said we are going to lift this ban on logging so that then people can get back into logging and we can utilize the trees that are mature in the forest and we can revive the local industry. I mean, it's a, it's a no brainer. No brainer. And at, at the all. same time, we are planting 15 billion trees. And so in fact, you people in Nakuru County, you have targeted 650 million trees. Mm. And you know, Governor, you're going to do it. What's the problem? It's just what will require people are just being silly in the other government, silly and not thinking ahead. Mm. Now, you see, we do so many things. Hmm? Hmm. Trees are rotting in the forest, you go, remove them, use them, livelihoods outside, and yeah. we are planting more, introducing new life into the forest. Hmm. I mean, really, it shouldn't have been so difficult to figure out. And he said, because of all of these things, I'm quoting now directly from that story, mm. he says that uh, the government had imposed a tax on all imported timber products in its budget to encourage locally made products. This is why we have decided to open up the forest and harvest timber so that we can create jobs for our youth and open up businesses while we continue with our plans to plant 15 billion trees in 10 years. Mm. The multi-billion dollar industry has been one of Kenya's best employers over the 10 years, uh, over the past 10 years, especially for uneducated youth in urban areas. Special areas in the South Rift, including Elberg and Molo, and Total in Nakuru and Majimazuri in Eldama Ravine, depended on the timber industry. Then you go and you close all of those things up. What did you expect the young people to do? Surely. I mean, the youth worked as loaders, they worked as tree cutters, power saw operators, transporters and millers. Others did manual work such as cleaning the milling areas. Then now you go and shut it down. Now there are seven categories of people who have lost their jobs across Imagine. this entire area. Mm. Hmm? Over the past six years, the impact of logging has been felt particularly in the towns, which initially enjoyed a vibrant economy based on the lucrative timber industries. From the 1990s, 1990s, mm. El Bergen and Molo towns enjoyed a boom in the, tinder, in the timber trade. The moratorium on logging that has been in place since February 2018, following a public outcry over illegal logging, mm-hmm, mm which was blamed for the declining water levels in the con in the country's main rivers. That's where this whole story came from. Yeah. It's important for us to look at it. Hmm? The origin. They said, now, you guys, they're removing trees from the area. Catchment area now has a problem. Water levels declining. Everywhere is drying up. That's the reason why they decided to 
halt logging yep. in 2018 February and said, you know what, let's allow this place to come back to life. Yeah. But the other side of the story is being seen. Immediately you do that, you've shut out jobs for hundreds of thousands of people. Yes. So now when the president is asking about this stupid thinking that shut down this, was it stupid thinking when they were talking about uh, allowing the earth to replenish? Surely, what are you thinking about? The minister in question then was the minister for environment, in charge of environment. Mr. Juan Tobiko. Is one called Keriako Tobiko, who had just been appointed after her serving as DPP for a while. Okay. And he basically is the one who's being cited here as having gazetted. However, the initiator of the move to ban logging in the forests was one William Ruto, who was then serving as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm. On the 24th of February 2018, President William Ruto suspended logging in all forests in the country for the next three months as water levels in major rivers continue to drop at alarming levels. The move is part of efforts by the country's government to respond to the drought that's sweeping the country. Please stop. This is what Please. the Deputy President said. Let me just quote no, him I verbatim. I want you to repeat the reason why. I will quote him because you, I'll repeat it. Okay. The government has with immediate effect imposed a moratorium on timber harvesting in all public and community forests mm -hmm. for a period of 90 days mm -hmm. to allow reassessment and rationalization of the entire forest sector in Kenya. Mm -hmm. In addition to the burning on cutting of trees for 90 days, the deputy president asked the environment minister to form a task force working group to find solutions to the crisis. Okay? Okay. Um, Hold on. Let me just continue a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Uh, at that same, uh, during that time, this was three days after the members of the National Assembly Environment and Natural Resources Committee appealed to the government to consider totally banning logging to save the water towers. So, Parliament had discussed this. A parliamentary committee in charge of environment and natural resources had taken in a lot of petitions from people. Um, many people had been quoted, not just in one part of the country, but in various parts of the country, along the Abadea, Mount Kenya, in the Mau area, and the issue of logging had just become a big issue. And reforestation was needed because deforestation had taken place. And the government listened, and the deputy president said, all right, 90 days, halt everything. In that time, you see us for environment. Can you establish a task force? And that task force should do what? That task force should bring us a report on what we need to do to rationalize this. The CS goes and forms a task force. Okay? Mm -hmm. Among the members of that task force was uh, Green Isaac Kalua. Yes. And others. And they went around the country looking at the water towers and looking at what else needs to be done. And they came up with a report. During the sittings of this task force, the CS... After the 90 days, the CS extended that moratorium by a year mm -hmm. and extended it again by a year after receiving the report and saying, now we implement the report. Mm -hmm. So, yo was an order that he received from his boss, the deputy president. So, the person who was called out yesterday for having put on this ridiculous order to stop logging in this area was ordered to do just so by the person who was speaking yesterday who was calling him or was it somebody else yes same 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 person same same okay now has the issue of deforestation or the issue of lowering water towers actually come to an end in this area has uh it? possible it's possible <laughs> now do we see a situation whereby now that you've opened for all and sunder to come in uh that uh, we might go back into this catchment area problem when it comes to lowering of water levels. As in, now that you've opened the door and all these people who did not have jobs now will come back, logging will continue, even as we're planting for these 15 billion trees, 650 million for this particular area, which is their target, we will not see this problem again. And th this Ujinga now suddenly will be wiped out. You know, is that what we're saying? That the problem now will be solved. 
because the logging issue has been reintroduced mm. let's just forget whoever gave what order and said you know this should not be maybe you should not have called the guy stupid if you were the one who gave the order right mm. but are we saying now that the issue will be solved because you're going to plant 650 million trees in this area allow people to come back in and log what are those trees going to grow in a week thank you See now, see you now. You know where I'm going with this story. You know the rains that we've been talking about that finally came after prayer and much supplication. The rains came back, isn't it? In some parts of the country, it's still raining. It's probably going to rain for another month or so before the cold weather kicks in proper, and then we'll maybe see some rains again in September. Are they enough to carry through to make sure that uh, we don't have a problem of water in this particular area? Forget about the other parts of the country. This area is it going to work? Or are we looking at another situation where it was an opportunity to please the people that you were speaking to at the time? Mm. You know, the <laughs> at the time the statement was made, at the time the ban was put in place, eh? remember, this followed an earlier situation when we had a handshake government between Kibaki and Raila Odinga. Mm -hmm. The same story of the water tower, same story of deforestation, same forest. I mean, this isn't a story that began yesterday, mm. but of significance, coming to the Jubilee government, there was an understanding that a committee would be formed. You know, we always form committees, yeah? Mm. That would then be informing the government, first of all, do an audit and inform the government of our forest cover mm -hmm. so that we know how many trees we have how many more we need i'm going to take the view that this committee did its work and that's why we want to plant the billions of trees we want to plant yes but also there was talk of a kenya water tower agency that was supposed to be anchored in the presidency mm -hmm. now i am not certain what that agency does mm. i'm not certain whether it is anchored in the presidency mm -hmm. and if it is Maybe it is from this view because I can only assume that they are perhaps very well informed about these matters. And so when they say that the ban should be lifted, it is gleaming from the advice that they have given to the presidency that this decision has been made. Is it? This is oh, you, but Did you start this, by this, saying, I can only assume? This is, is supposition. It? It's probable. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah. it's, it, it's probable okay. mm -hmm. that this is an informed decision. Yeah. Okay. See, Logging and fishing are very similar in this sense. Huh? Mm -hmm. The process of fishing in Lake Victoria has mm -hmm. seasons, mm -hmm. which are often not adhered to, but they are. Mm -hmm. And the reason is so that the fish can get time. They can repopulate. Yeah, that's the general idea. Yes, yes. That is, of course, if the water isn't being messed up by the affluent. And, these other and affluent, yes, mm. be being driven directly into the lake. Mm. Okay? So... And then when it comes to fishing, there's a question of what sort of nets you use because the certain nets which even catch the small fish which haven't grown, which are not of any economic value, so to speak. So it's destructive. Mm. The rules, the laws are in place to ensure that these things happen. Mm -hmm. Same with our forests. Mm -hmm. The question is, why did logging get to a point where it was out of hand, meaning it was out of control? Yeah. It's like Every other person and their cousin could go into the forest and cut trees. Because there was no application of the reality that was on the ground and there was no regulation as a result of that application. Because anybody could do what they want. And in most cases, because commercial value far outweighed any kind of environmental value. Any kind of connection between... Can, you can imagine a situation whereby it is the people, they can see very clearly. Because they've lived on this land and they've eaten from the land and they've, they've tilled the land. And they can see very clearly... The way it was some 10 years ago, where we had uh, forestation everywhere, we could see that our water was at certain levels. We can see what's missing. Our trees have reduced significantly. What has happened as a result of that? The water levels have receded significantly. So people can say, hold on a minute. It's obvious that one plus one equals two. And in most cases, it's the people's voice that's going to come out first. And they say, wait, something is not right here. That even when it's raining, we're not able to catch a lot of this water. Because what? There's nothing to hold the water down yeah. on the ground. It's clear. Right? Mm. But the commercial value far outweighed the livelihood value because you have these forests still in place. There's no regulation because there's no 
thought about what is really happening. So what happens? People start to make noise and they say, hold on, we cannot have this continue. There must be some kind of regulation. You'll find that every time, most times, when a regulation of this nature comes about, even this one in 2018, 2018 when William Ruto said that, wait, what's going on here? I direct you to do what? It came as a result of people making noise. They said the water that we have is not what it used to be. And so somebody sits up and take notice. And then you realize, wait, for the last 10 years, what have we been doing? Pillaging the earth. Trees have gone, water reduced. Drought is more severe when it comes. But guess what? Drought existed even 10 years ago. But people did not suffer the effects because the forest was still at a certain level. True or false? True. Then now, nobody really marks what's going on. You come, you cut, you log, you do whatever you want. You don't replenish the earth and you cut it off somewhere. Commercial value far outweighs any kind of regulation that you're going to put in place. But then your people say, ah, wait a minute, this cannot go on anymore. Then now you put in regulation. But it only comes as a result of people making noise. So if people did not make noise, what is the likelihood that there will be some kind of regulation put in place? You know, we have um, an agency, Kenya Forest Services, whose job is actually among others, guard the forest, guard our forest cover. Mm -hmm. Now, the question I want to pose is, do you think it is really possible for ordinary citizens to be involved in illegal logging without the nod of the agency that's supposed to protect the forest? Oh, do you think it it's actually possible? It's hard, small. It should be hard. It's like asking, do you really think that poaching can actually take place in extremely high numbers it's difficult because the logging we're talking about is not one tree falling off no. whatever <laughs> it's it's a significant number of trees being felled in rapid succession with reg with regularity so obviously for that to happen it's not uh, it's not like you're snipping your nails it's some noise that's going to take place and it's over time so somebody's going to notice that you're there you know i want to believe that the what the president said yesterday was not said in isolation there are conversations that have taken place there are briefs that the president has received has seen all those institutions that we're talking about the kenya forest service the kenya water towers agency the kenya forestry research institute all of them plus others and the ministry of environment itself they look at the forest cover when the president said one of the biggest focuses of this government will be planting of trees and doing 15 billion trees by 20 what 32 2032 mm -hmm. he was informed by something he read something okay the president can't just wake up and forget that he's he's pushing for the planting of trees and then say let's go into logging so there must be something else that the president is saying it probably is in how the president is communicating this message because just like you said, fishing and logging, same, same, right? So you allow, first of all, you stop this, you organize, and then you can allow controlled fishing. Because having all those trees in those forests for the next 15 years and not a single logging takes place, then also, you know, it doesn't... No, it doesn't quite work like there that. There must be logging that will take place mm. in this forest. It's, it's the how. So when the president was saying yesterday, he must have been saying something, but he just didn't give the full message. And the question is, what exactly is that message? Mm -hmm. And ideally, what should happen thereafter? What should happen thereafter is we should be hearing from the Minister for Environment, Soipan Tu here today, saying this is what is going to happen. <laughs> the D, the, what are they called? The county commissioners. Mm. You're going to work with the Kenya Forest Service, the Kenya Water Towers Agency, blah, 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 and come up with the modalities. And this is who is going to be allowed to log. And this is how much can be logged. And this is, these are the only forests that can be logged because of this 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 and the other we have got sufficient trees mm. and it shall only take place for the next six months after which close and it's only you know if all those things are said then you can all sit back and say okay yeah so we can see the logging is taking place there we can we are planting trees here but the president didn't put it that way so it sounds like he's just said hey now we're here in molo Go ahead, go up our soul in gear forest. It would be great if there was that kind of concert. It would be great if there was that kind of concert between the things that you've just said. To know that in this particular forest, we don't have this kind of whatever. We know that our, our cover at the moment looks like this. And we know that with this 15 billion trees, we'd be able to reach the United Nations 
suggestion of at least 10 percent forest cover we would be able to do what and what we're talking about fishing okay look at japan for example when they talk about number one their whale fishing and their tuna fishing the same thing that you're saying we know very well that in, in particular parts of the year in the warmer months that's when your tuna will go and they will um repopulate and at some point the rivers and the lakes are teeming with tuna so they say it's at this point we're gonna open it you guys go fish go right at the times when the months are leaner when they're not going to be laying that's when we say you know what no fishing no fishing mm. and they know where they go they know where these fish migrate to the whales as well because we know you're going to whale for your blubber and all of these things so they say it's at this point when these things are are reproducing they're giving birth like this please go ahead fish as much as you like <laughs> but after like that <laughs> like this <laughs> after that close the thing no whaling in mm. fact get so serious we find people whaling you can actually be arrested and convicted not can of an offense not mm. can okay will but they've you taken will. it so seriously that they know the areas they know where they know who you even have to have this kind of license this kind of thing it would be nice if it was happening in concert like that which by the way is not difficult to do it's not difficult it probably is what the president initiated yesterday. He okay, but did anybody else know? But you see, that's the problem. <laughs> probably, probably the president was aware that this was going to happen. All right. But then he goes to Molo <laughs> and the people talk about it and he has got to respond to it. Now, his response and the way he words it, he, sh he could have probably have said that, yes, I am aware. I am actually the one who ordered it first. And we are working on it. And very soon, we'll come up with that. The minister will announce yeah. the Making county commissioners and the Kenya forest because he made it seem as if something. the moratorium that was put on logging was some stupid willy-nilly thing that somebody woke up on a tuesday morning and said in fact people should get out of the forest meanwhile it was not you know it was properly instituted so in 2018 the then deputy president william ruto uh, ordered a 90-day moratorium on logging across the country and and that he also instructed the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Keria Kotobiko, then to form a task force that will look at what is happening in the country and come up with recommendations on what needs to be done. April 30th, a task force commission to review forestry management following a declaration of a three-month moratorium on logging has recommended the establishment of a caretaker management team pending constitution of a new forest board. The task force, under the leadership of Greenbelt Movement Chairperson Marion Kamau, also recommended prosecution of Kenya Forest Service officials culpable of mismanaging forests. This is what uh, Ms. Kamau said. We recommend immediate commencement of investigations and possible prosecution of all criminal-related activities that touch on former KFS board members and staff implicated in malpractices. She said when she led members of the task force in handing over their report to the Environment and Forestry CS, Keria Kotobiko. Alongside the report, the task force also presented an envelope containing a list of individuals believed to be key beneficiaries <laughs> of illegal logging activities. This is in 2018. It was not immediately clear then whether 16 KFS officials who had recently been suspended were part of the list in the sealed envelope whose details remain confidential. In a raft of recommendations, which were 15, the task force also called for the review of forest zoning to establish a core conservation zone to be surrounded by a multiple user buffer zone, the width of which should not exceed 500 meters. In the remarks after receiving the report, Tobiko, the CS, assured the task force of the ministry's commitment to implement the report and bring to book those named in that report. This is what Kiriako Tobiko said and is quoted verbatim. He says, the deputy president, William Ruto, made it abundantly clear that this report has got, to, has got no shelves to be kept before the issue of it gathering dust does not even arise. I reiterate that the findings of this task force will be implemented at the shortest time possible. He's basically saying, this is what it is. The deputy president then said... I commit to you that the report's recommendations will be implemented. I appreciate the fact that some decisions herein will be pretty difficult to make, but they will have to be done. This is what Deputy President William Ruto said. He initiated the journey towards this ban on logging. He instructed the CS to form a task force. Yesterday, he said that there was a minister who was... Mm. Who started this whole thing. 
And now here we are. I mean, the people of Molo now don't have business. The people of El Bago and El Bago is a dead town. And it's a logging town. Now look, you have a clip of what the deputy president was saying. Mm -hmm. The deputy, the then, the then deputy, president. deputy president. Play. Cover. We must stop all cutting of trees in all our forests, both state forests and community forests. Kwa sababu tuko na shida kubwa, mito haina maji. Tumekuwa na shida miaka mitatu hatujakuwa na mvua ya kutosha. The misuse of forest resources is threatening water availability and food security in our country. That's what he said. That was then. Yesterday he called it Ujinga. Umonai ulo Ujinga iko in Kenya. You know, much as it sounds like a cliche, mm. it sounds like one is making light of something serious mm. or one is trivializing the man who things are said. Mm. But you, at times I'm forced to consider that I must distinguish between political speech when someone is make a politician, mm. whether it's a president or a member of parliament or member, whoever it is, when they are simply saying something because of the political advantages of that particular situation. Mm. This situation is true. If you were to go to Batek, mm. there were sawmills, there were areas around there because that place is, was very heavily forested at some point. Yes. Towns that were involved, if you go to the Mount Kenya area, you'll find similar situations where businesses dried up because of such bands and the towns simply dwindled. It's mm. like they fizzled away. Okay? But at that particular point in time, there was a gentleman who was chair of the Environment Committee in Parliament, Sol Kareke Mbiuk. He, Mbiuk, yes, he raised an issue then regarding this. Mm. And saying, look, folks, what we're, what we're balancing here is actually our very existence. This thing has to be ground to a halt because it's threatening our very existence. Yep. Not just livelihood, our existence is being threatened here. Now, are we there for saying that our existence is no longer being threatened and that we've got this process under control so that when we say logging begins, there's an orderly manner in which this process is actually going to be undertaken. The existence that you're being told is being threatened is the one of the people who have jobs as a result of logging. That's the existence that has been threatened. <laughs> yes, no, <Abby. laughs> That's a current one. Yeah, no, 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 yes, the, 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 yes, Eric. Y you started here by saying, you know, sometimes you you understand and you try to distinguish. Yes, the political rhetoric. Yes, you know, of our politicians. Yes, but I think sometimes it's important not to. Yes. Okay, because political rhetoric coming from a deputy president and a president. It's not political rhetoric. It is policy pronouncement. Unfortunately. When a minister speaks, that's policy pronouncement. When president speaks, that's policy pronouncement. When a member of parliament speaks. Now, that is also poli looking about... It, you cannot just put it out there in isolation. You've got a responsibility. Right? Mm. When the deputy president then was saying, you know what, this is an issue and it's a big issue in our country and logging and illegal logging has taken place and it was proved to be true by the task force that was chaired, chaired by none other than the Green Belt Movement Chairperson mm. and other people, right, who are in that, including Kina Kalua, and they went around the country and they found, yes, there's illegal logging and this is actually being perpetrated by the people who are paid to conserve forests. Officials of the Kenya Forest Service are involved in not logging, illegal logging. Where logging is taking place beyond what has been prescribed. Where logging is taking place in a bad way. So he was proven right then. And they were given a report. I don't recall an issue where the DPP actually took KFS people to court because of criminal negligence of their work. The names in the envelope were there? I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, recall. Maybe there's something that happened. I just don't recall. Okay. So there was a, there was something that was to take place. Now the reason why it took on, you know, it went beyond one year, this moratorium to two years to three years to like there's no action being taken, is a question that ought to be asked. What was it that Kiriako Tobiko then did with the report that he received? What did they come up with in terms of policy or going forward on forests? If that is what uh, Ruto is calling Ujinga, okay, but he cannot just distance himself from a decision that was taken in 2018 political 
convenience, expediency, and it was rhetoric not just or decision. not. It was not just he a decision. Cannot. It was not just a decision. It wasn't. It was pioneered by he himself. Yes. He can't distance himself from it. He can't especially use the words that he was using to say, you know what, you will go Jinga your time. Okay, but accept you're, you're stuck by saying to Likwa Wajinga. If there was Ujinga. <laughs> and then go on and say now this is this what, what we're we going to do. do. To avoid a return of where we were in twenty eighteen when we were instituting this ban, this is what we are going to do. He said yesterday part of it was to a plan. He didn't say what the plan is. You've got a clip mm. of him yesterday in church. I do like that. Press play. Wakati nilikuwa hapa tuliwaambia maneno ya El Bagon na Molo hapa mlikuwa ni wafanyabiashara wakubwa sana wa mambo ya mbao. Si ndio? Dunia hii ilikuwa dunia ya mbao. Tukaenda kuna waziri mwingine mjinga alikuwa mjinga siku hiyo. Alienda akazuia mambo yote ya forest kapotea. Hasa miti inaoza huko kwa msitu watu wanahangaika pande hii hawana mbao. Unaona ile ujinga iko hii Kenya? E, e, imesemekana e, wakati nilikuwa hapa tuliwaambia maneno si so this is what he said yesterday and he went on to say but we will now go back into logging but with a plan he did not say what the plan is mm. to the very many people who still have power source in their houses in elbagon in molo the whistle has been blown yes in kurasoi they are back to the forest. You have been told, please begin. Yeah. And they will to the process. criminals in the Kenya Forest Service who maybe were not even prosecuted, they are like, ah, kabla <coughs> iki tu, kabla tu ambiwe, this is the plan. Eh? We are going to sell this matter. trees. Sell trees. And chap, chap. Wake the, up by the on end Monday of the week, morning. Sell trees. Sell trees. Kata, 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 kata. Siraiz alisema tukata miti. Kata, 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 kata. By the time order is brought into this thing, <laughs> some chaos Forest will have taken place. Forest gone. You know, we are asking you whether you support a uh, lifting of the ban on, uh, on on logging, and we want to hear from you. Zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. Let's go to the phone lines. I see Zachary is here. Zachary, good morning. Oh, good morning, people. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's only that we are having our winter here. It's winter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, oh, Zachary. Man, cold. <laughs> so I feel like I'll be the uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, yeah. <laughs> that place. <laughs> that place, yes. Now let me let me tell you this, guys. Yeah. Uh, um, there are some people who are born, or I mean, God said some. I, I don't know. Do, I don't. I don't want to talk about God, yeah. Mm. But Mr. Eric, as most of us are planning only for the next meal, yeah. Mm. Some guys are, have been bestowed by, I don't know which God bestowed them with this part to plan about, even in fact, a hundred years to come, yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> I remember very well that Mr. Ruto was very, very instrumental on the moratorium, yeah? Yes. And that he banned the rogging, yeah? Yes. Taking, it, uh, his, uh, taking the time that he was, uh, you know, actually campaigning about the, the, the banning of rogging, yeah? Mm. He was privileged. He was in a position privileged to actually know that, oh, okay, after some these years, I'll be calling the shot, yeah? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, uh, uh, let me tell everyone to, uh, to, to ask himself or herself, yeah? How, how much was, how, how was, you know, we are talking about vast, vast forest land, yeah? Mm -hmm. How is it, how much is it worth in terms of Kenyan shilling, yeah? Mm. And now, this all this now is uh, okay, lies in the hands of the president to say, okay, let us have rogue here, let us stop here, let us do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I actually just play that uh, the forest guys are going to be very, very honest and take care of our environment. That's true, but I see that uh, you know, I may feel that somebody, somebody without mentioning names, yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm also a truthful man, yeah. Mm. Somebody said a vision about the forest in Kenya, and that is uh, my take. Mm. And uh, let me say, tell you, man, this call here, call here in Massachusetts, yeah? 
about uh, politicizing uh, our forests, mm. our trees, our environment. Mm. Okay, I've seen him make uh, very, very, very unfortunate decisions lately mm. regarding our taxes, some I call levies and what have you, but um, when you just uh, say that uh, the ban on logging in Ujinga, mm. Aravu, you say that you have a plan, a plan which you have not uh, uh, documented and given to the press and to the people. Mm. I'm afraid that um, we are uh, not only going to kill the workers of this country, but also the environment and the whole population. Mm. You see, Eric, uh, I'm um, almost thinking that... Uh, there is and there are people within government mm. who are going to benefit regardless of what the environment what, what becomes of the environment mm. the president should be told that uh we have people who are watching and maybe one of these days people will come out and resist these things mm. we cannot treat our environment with we have a plan a plan which has not been given to us have a good day, gentlemen. Asante, and the Asante. one lady. Asante Molimui Rongo. 0719-012-600. Do you support the lifting of the ban on logging in Kenya? This is what uh, the president announced yesterday. He said, you know what? Uh, this ban on logging, <sighs> let's lift it. Because trees are rotting in the forest. People are here. People who used to work in this industry now have no jobs. And it's a lose-lose situation. Mm -hmm. And it's because of some CS who was <laughs> post Ujinga. In, in, what the Ujinga here? Is it stupid or silly? You know, <laughs> when you talk about consequences <laughs> that uh, Irungu is talking about, huh? uh, nature doesn't wait. Nature pushes back very quickly. Mm. You muck around with it. You do what you're not supposed to do. Or it speaks to you very, very loudly. Yeah. And nature has been speaking to us these last few years. Yes, it has. Very, very clearly. Now, if we didn't learn that lesson well, then the lesson that awaits us is going to be infinitely worse. You know, the, the very sad bit here is because of the lack of clarity in the president's communication, I still, at the back of my mind, I'm thinking what the president is saying is something that has... There are people who have burnt the midnight oil somewhere in the public service. Yeah. Since last night. Actually working... Yeah, for some time. Last night. Uh -huh. No, no, no. This is something they've Before been working for some time. Mm. Working on a plan on how logging can take place in Kenya properly structured logging taking place in Kenya. All right? The president has consumed this information. He has given the go-ahead. Yeah, 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 I like this. Or maybe he has said, tweak this and the other. Okay. They have discussed it maybe even in cabinet. But how the president put it yesterday was minus very many important details, details. that he should have come out with yesterday or at least hold off on making that promise in church yesterday. Now, because of the way he has put it, it even jeopardizes his own message on let's plant 15 billion trees by 2020, by 2032. His own message of let's green our country. His message on let everybody plant how many trees per person again? His person message. Two million, uh, every, no, no. no, two million per day is what is coming out to That's be. a total, yes. Mm. Two million trees per day. In the country. In the country. Yes. That entire message now gets starts getting it gets watered down watered down by just that one statement that he made in church yesterday which was an incomplete statement which was a statement made in a rush which was a statement made to you know because a politician is talking like, to people yes. and he's just feeling let i me, need to give you something yeah let yeah. me give you something because you brought it out and that could jeopardize an entire government policy this is true if not corrected if we don't hear from so it's pan to here today, today saying so people maybe, yeah. this is how logging shall take place 
and what it would do it was validate some of these things that you're saying yeah because you do not have a policy on something like this having touched on the environment without prior planning you don't it's not something that you wake up in the morning and say this is what we are going to do this is not one of those moments i remember when i read something whereby uh, late queen elizabeth when she was at a function if she held her bag in a certain way her her aides would know what she wanted to do <laughs> if she stood up and maybe touched her cheek the folks would know okay the chick is ready to go mm. this is not one of those things where william ruto as president is standing in molo and says something and everybody in the environment ministry knows okay guys he said it project x has kicked in no it's it's not one of those things whereby mm -hmm. he's spoken so we know he's given the signal then we go no these are delicate intricate things that need to be done in a particular way but yes the way in which it was delivered that's why people normally say communication doesn't matter it, it does, does. <laughs> it does you know. <laughs> because you either water down or you build up something that you've been in the planning for and guess what these plans that we're talking about now were probably talked about and in place before he became president yep when you talk to handlers of high-ranking political officials in the country mm. I have spoken to some and one of the things that you hear mm. repeatedly is that what we told the leader to say and what we wrote yeah, down yeah. and what he said are completely different and when we asked him did we not agree that this is what this you're is going it. to say and this says, is the message yes and he says you know i was going to say that but then i, was overtaken the I looked at the new and i decided <laughs> so now they have to go back now again. you go and manage the people now you go and manage the people here that's you... why mm. tula will speak today if she doesn't then we might have a problem no we already have a problem Bigger there than... are people the words today, had barely there are people cutting trees what do you I mean today yesterday you. there were people yesterday who started sharpening their tools and said ah to mm. we more sharpening <laughs> because we're do you know go. that there's you can like a cut... forest guard somewhere who has already pocketed cash yes do you know you can cut forest at night just so that you understand <laughs> Hmm? so it's not as though they're waiting they would be aware that clarification will come on board so before it does mm -hmm. riding on what was said let's make hay well, while, the sun or even the moon is shining but <laughs> let's make hay. in this case let's make sawdust because <laughs> nani has already polished off his signs of nani and sons coming again to start operating today yes mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about yes and was that the plan of the let's just take the ministry alone let's not even talk about kfs let's not talk about all these other guys ministry alone does that do something to their plans absolutely it does you know uh, among the very many conversations that i saw on social media yesterday was one where you know we we're talking about the uptake of the president's message on planting 15 billion trees government ministers psas heads of state departments ministries and agencies have basically taken this up and running they've gone to plant trees even the first lady has led on the move to plant trees in fact the first lady has even gone to the only rainforest in kenya the kakamega rainforest and adopted some acres all right now that's where the question comes in so <laughs> so the first lady adopts some acres of some forest and then we open the ban on logging. Ting, ting, tick, ting. You know, when such conversations get to that level, you are like, oh, okay. It's because Kenyans are used to seeing things in dotted lines and, and, and straight lines. <laughs> and when they start connecting, okay, so the first lady has adopted a forest. And now the president says we can log. What exactly are we getting? What are we getting? Yeah, hmm. yeah what? It's unfortunate. Yeah again the president i know his handlers try very hard to try and put it, but the president needs to realize you don't say some things in some ways you don't put promises packaged in some ways it has an impact this is the situation room the only way to start your day